creative strategies for vacancy. Mm -hmm. what, what do we mean by creative yeah, strategies so for vacancy? Yeah, so for addressing, I guess, vacancy would be a better way. Um, so like, you know, students that grow up on, in North St. Louis, they're, they're faced, with va faced with vacancy every day, you know, buildings, empty lots. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it ends up feeling like, you know, lack of care or concern for them, you know, their community and, and, and so forth. Um, and so, uh, so through that process is where we, uh, you know, and through Northside workshop development as well, um, you know, the, vac the building has two vacant lots on either side of it. So uh, through that kind of the beautification of that space is where we kind of use to show students, you know, what the possibilities are. This building was deteriorating a year ago. You know, how can we, uh, you know, continue this kind of momentum and how can students look at vacancy and see potential? And You know, it's, uh, I have a, a casual academic interest in real estate and, uh, it, and really it's, it's very, the vacant lot is a very unusual thing. I mean, it's one of, when we were driving through uh, that's one of the things that I noted right away is that it's one of the unusual things about St. Louis to me uh, is that, you know, you've got these older buildings that are, are really nice and, and some of which are being taken care of and some of which aren't. And you have a, like a lot of new, like the last 20 years construction. Clearly there was a, like a big push of that, I would assume, before everything took a crap. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also a lot of vacant land. And, and that is, is like almost an icon of someplace that's economically depressed. Like in Chicago, you know, you don't see vacant land on the north side. <laughs> like, you know, you see vacant land on the west side or the far south side, you know, because otherwise someone would have put a building there or have developed it in some way. Or even, you know, like like Logan Square or, or whatever, Avondale, like, you know, this, even if it's vacant, people are invested, so invested in the community that they'll put a garden there or something. So it's really, it's an unusual thing in big cities to see vacant space. And it, it's odd walking around here museum and there's so many you know there's so much development but yet there's a couple vacant lots within a couple blocks of here so yeah I mean um, my you know like going back to uh, you know understanding the responsibility that comes with with a building you know that kind of drew me to vacant lots you know and it's also kind of like a huge um, you know challenge too I mean um, the vacant lot that we have um, next to our building, we've turned into like an outside classroom. So it has, uh, you know, beehives, it has a garden, stuff like that. But what do you do besides putting a garden there? You know, what are the, some, what are the different ways that you can activate that vacant lot? So the bee project, as you, how many colonies of bees does, it, does this 35 acres now hold? And, and what are the sideline projects or what are the offshoot projects that have sort of evolved out of the... Well, I mean, the... <coughs> Like I said, you know, after I went in and kind of documented the site, um, the next question was like, well, how can the site be used again? And so since it was built for community, I, I kind of wanted to follow, follow that line. Um, and so bees kind of representing uh, community um, seemed like, like a kind of nice poetic, um, you know, answer to the question. Um, but the plot gets better. Um, is that in 2011, St. Louis actually lost population. Um, and so bees and St. Louis are actually in the same, same boat, you know, in terms of vanishing and losing population. Um, and since uh, bees pollinate the majority of our food, uh, we actually really rely on them for survival. Um, so it kind of became this thing, you know, if we like kind of take care of the bees, we actually take care of um, uh, ourselves. And if we give them a place, we actually give ourselves a place. Um, and so, um, so at this time, I don't know anything about beekeeping or anything like that. Uh, I made a sculpture on, on the site uh, where uh, I, I made some beehives that like looked like um, uh, one of the Pruitt-Igo buildings, which was designed by the architect uh, Yamasaki. He did the Twin Towers. Um, and so one of the offshoots was the living proposal. So, you know, the proposal is like turning Pure Diego into a public space um, where maybe a component could have a bee sanctuary in it. And so that public uh, proposal actually was implemented on the Northside workshop. So almost as like a pilot program. So, you know, so it's not just something on paper, but if you really wanted to see something like this in action, you'd come to the Northside workshop and see it. So we have eight garden beds, two beehives in Old North, um, and we teach every summer um, uh, workshops there for middle school students where they learn intro to gardening, beekeeping, uh, and there's always like an art component uh, that, that comes with it.